The highlight of the Global Forum on Nicotine is the Michael Russell Oration. The event honours the work and memory of Michael Russell, who is perhaps best known for his statement made in the British Medical Journal in 1976 that people smoke from the nicotine, but they die from the tar. But his contribution is much wider. He was a pioneer in the study of nicotine dependence and the development of ways to help smokers quit. Whilst working at the Institute of Psychiatry in London between 1969 and 1998, he conducted highly original studies that revolutionised our understanding of the pharmacological and behavioural aspects of tobacco smoking. I had the privilege of working in the same research unit as Mike during the 1970s, and though we didn't have a harm reduction language at that time, many of us were working on pragmatic ways to reduce drug-related harms. Here is a prescient statement from him in 1991 made in the British Journal of Addiction, and if I can just read it, to quote, the case has advanced that selected nicotine replacement products be made as palatable and acceptable as possible and actively promoted on the open market to enable them to compete with tobacco products. He continues, everything possible should be done to give them a competitive edge over tobacco. They should be advertised and actively promoted. Finally, he says, there should be health authority endorsement to enable exploitation of their health advantages and taxation should be adjusted to give them a clear price advantage over tobacco products." End of quote. So I think that tells us all we need to know about safer nicotine products and tobacco harm reduction. Michael Russell orators are chosen to be thought-provoking and to help us to push forward on the challenges for tobacco harm reduction. They're chosen because they're inspiring and help us to better focus and to direct our energies in the year ahead. Therefore, I am truly delighted that the oration this year will be given by Louise Ross. Many of you will know that the UK has a positive and sympathetic environment for nicotine vaping. The use of e-cigarettes is supported by the National Health Service, by Public Health England and by the major medical colleges and health foundations. But what about the frontline staff? What should people working in health services tell patients about vaping? The UK has a well-developed network of stop smoking services. They're free, they're staffed by expert advisors, though like other services, they have suffered severe funding cuts. There is a hugely important story to be told about how stop smoking services embraced tobacco harm reduction. And it didn't happen overnight. Much of it is due to Louise Ross. Louise managed the Leicester City Stop Smoking Service from 2004 until 2018. When vaping came along, she was initially sceptical and was concerned about the risks and problems it might bring. But then she met vapors and spoke to them and heard their stories. She listened when they told her that vaping had allowed them to quit smoking. Louise realized that the huge potential benefit that would follow from embracing the new technology. She realised that the stop smoking service model needed to change and in particular in order to help those who'd given up on giving up. She started developing the first e-cigarette friendly service from 2014. In fact, what she would now call a vape friendly service. So you're about to hear a very important story it's a story about curiosity, about passion, about the importance of listening to people, and in particular, in listening to smokers and vapours. So I have great pleasure in welcoming Louise Ross to give the seventh Michael Russell oration. The title of her presentation is Freeing the Inner Vapour in Smokers. Over to you, Louise. <laughs> 